Hey folks, this is Matt once again, and uh, wanted to do something a little bit different. Uh, talk about a director that I really enjoy. He'll probably be in my top ten favorite directors. Uh, Peter Hyams. Director I really enjoy. I really get a kick out of this guy. Uh, haven't seen all of his films, but some of the films I have not seen is Capricorn 1. Have not seen that. He did one called Hanover Street with Harrison Ford. Didn't see that one. Uh, one called Beyond a Reasonable Doubt with Michael Douglas, didn't see that. Another Michael Douglas one, uh, The Star Chamber. I want to see that film sometime, but I haven't seen that one yet. Um, pretty much the ones I show you are the only ones I've seen of this guy. And of the ones I've seen of his, there's only one that's not really that good. And that's this one. Yeah, this one has a lot of problems. I mean, I like the idea... Where it's the safari that they're going to go back in time to hunt dinos, but don't take anything back. But unfortunately, something goes wrong. And when they get back into present time, something has changed. You know, it's the butterfly effect. Something's very minuscule is changed. It can have a ripple effect into our time. So I like the idea behind it, but I can watch this as a curiosity piece. It sounds stupid, but, like, what might have been? Because this has an $80 million budget, and it looks like a sci-fi channel movie. Uh, and Ben Kingsley's hair looks fucking ridiculous. I'm not sure if Edward Burns was the best guy to cast. I don't know, this has... Like, Edward... <clears throat> there's... I can watch this film as a time waster, but at the same time, it's a bad movie. I cannot call this a good movie at all. Like, I know I had a lot of problems with production and floods and the company got bankrupt and uh, during post-production. and Yeah, they, they had a lot of problems with this. And there's a lot, there, there are big plot holes and all that stuff. I mean, plot holes I can deal with if the film's very entertaining, but yeah, it's not a good film. But one person liked it. <laughs> I mean, I can watch it, but yeah, <laughs> missed the opportunity. <clears throat> but these are my top ten favorite, or my, the top, the ten uh, Peter Hines films I enjoy in order. Number ten would be The Presidio. I know I should get this on DVD sometime, but I have a lot of VHSs converting them all to DVD, let alone Blu-ray or anything. <laughs> Still be a lot of money. But The Presidio, basically, Sean Connery is a colonel and Mark Harmon is a cop. They used to work together, but something happened, so they're not really on the best of terms. And I know Mark Harmon's seen Sean Connery's daughter, which is played by Meg Ryan, or at least has a thing for his daughter, at least during the film. But there's like a murder at a military compound, so they have to work together. There are some moments in this that were kind of slow, but at the end of the day, I was entertained by the film. I like these two guys, Sean Connery and Mark Harmon. Mark Harmon I definitely love in summer school, but I liked him in this film. I like him as an actor. So that's the Presidio at number 10. Uh, let's see. Number 9 would be... Shoot, I forgot to get the disc, but I'll say now. Because it's in a pile. It's just a disc. It doesn't have a case. But my friend Efri actually gave me this film. I want to thank him for it. Running Steered. Not the Paul Walker film. This is the one with uh, trying to find my water. This is the one with Billy Crystal and Gregory Hines as cops. It's a buddy cop film, and it's a very entertaining film. <clears throat> it's an entertaining film. It's a fun film. Billy Crystal and Gregory Hines play off each other very well. Uh, if you haven't seen Running Scared and you like buddy cop action movies, you definitely should check it out. It's a fun movie, Running Scared. That's that for number nine. <clears throat> number eight would be Narrow Margin. <clears throat> I'm not sure why this film got hated on so much. I mean, Gene Havman's pretty much protecting Ann Archer as she... Some hitmen are trying to kill her. I think... I haven't seen this in a while. Yeah, she's a witness to a murder and they're trying to kill her and Gene Hammond's trying to protect her especially when they get on this train and trying to avoid the killers going through this train and then they get off the train they have nowhere else to go they get back on there they have to find a way to do it without getting caught without getting killed 
Uh, I had a lot of fun with Narrow Margin. I thought it was a really good thriller. I think Cisco and Eber gave this like two thumbs down or something. I don't understand that. See, my even my stomach said, "What the fuck?" In his alley. If you didn't hear him, I, I, even my stomach was like, Ugh. "But I like this film, Narrow Margin. I thought it was a good thriller." I may be wrong about this one here, but I think they did. I don't understand that. Number seven would be Stay Tuned. Very fun comedy. Uh, I don't know why this film is bare bones. Uh, it probably because it wasn't a hit. That's why. But uh, Stay Tuned. This is a film where John Ritter is a couch potato. He's with his wife, played by Pam Dauber. And Jeffrey Jones comes by and he offers him this high-tech enter entertainment system and satellite dish. But it's pretty much the satellite dish from hell. So him and his wife get pulled into pretty much a hell version of cable TV. <laughs> where they have to survive for a certain amount of time. And they're going through all this crazy stuff. Like th this game show that if they lose, they get killed. Uh, instead of Wayne's World, it's Dwayne's Underworld, uh, driving over Miss Daisy. <laughs> uh, you know, there's a, a take on uh, Looney Tunes, which was pretty fun. Northern overexposure, so they might freeze to death. A lot of weird commercials, like Three Men and Rosemary's Baby, and uh, Silencer of the Lambs or something, where it's like, that thing for Hannibal Lecter, like they put it on these kids in this commercial, just really a lot of uh, fun imagination going on in the movie. And, you know, being the couch potato, like a lot of people, uh, it's definitely a fun viewing experience. This is especially a very fun scene where John Ritter, who of course was in Three's Company, so they give a nod to Three's Company where he's standing there wondering what's going on, that, Two girls who are supposed to be like the girls from Three's Company. Like, where have you been? And he's like, Ah! I miss John Ritter. John Ritter just seemed like a sweetheart of a guy, and he was fantastic in this film. I want to do a review for this film sometimes. Stay tuned. Just kits a lot of ass. It's a very fun movie. It's a very underrated movie. This movie kits a lot of ass. Yeah. Number six, I did a review for this film, Outland. It's my favorite Sean Connery film. It's just, I agree with this review. Pretty much what this review says. Superbly crafted, sci-fi epic, delivers the goods, awesome. That's how I feel in the movie. It's a western in space that's very well done. And I did a review for this film. You can check it out on the channel, but Outland, love that film. And being a fan of Van Damme, of course, I have this, Sudden Death. Kind of, I'd say an underrated Van Damme film. Now, it's a Van Damme film not many people talk about. Uh, it has no features. At least this DVD has no features. I don't know if there's any other DVD that has it, but this doesn't. And uh, it's Die Hard in a Hockey Ring. Uh, I like Powers Booth as the villain. I thought Van Damme did a good job. He's this fighter fighter guy who takes his kids to the hockey rink during the playoffs. And of course, ter bad guys come in and they say, you don't do what we want, we'll blow the place up. And Van Damme has to kiss some ass. And I just had a lot of fun with this movie. I thought for a Die Hard in a type of movie, it's very fun, it's entertaining, has good pyrotechnics, good action scenes, especially the fight scene where Van Damme kisses the of a Someone in a mascot suit. I think it's a penguin suit. Like, kiss the shit out of him. That's a really fun fight. Which, actually, that fight reminds me of a fight in Outland, really enough. But, hey, still a fun fight. My only problem with the film is that times it's a little too convenient. Uh, for instance, I know that's supposed to be the case, but sometimes it, it does annoy me a bit. You know how, like, some movies... The bad guy has a gun and a good guy, and it just all happens at that point in time. That gun is empty. Click. Well, no one's that lucky, or rarely that lucky. See, even here, like, there's a moment where uh, if the game ends, then the place is going to blow up, so this person has to make this shot, and it's like five seconds left, and they finally make the shot, and then whew, they're in sudden death. They're in overtime, so the game will continue, and the place won't blow up, and I'm like... It's kind of like when you have that bomb 
you know, they put the bomb and there's only one second left. I, I hate, I, sometimes I really hate that kind of stuff. I'm just annoyed. It's like, you know, it's a little too convenient. But other than that, still really fun, entertaining movie. A uh, lot of good stuff too, I thought. Uh, number four would be 2010. I thought this was a worthy sequel. I probably prefer this o over the original. Of course, I'm a big fan of Roy Scheider, so that helps. It's definitely more straightforward film than 2001, although I do like 2001. And John Lithgow, I thought, was also good. Wonderful special effects, but I think it still has a... It's still not a... It's not an action movie. It's still a drama about this uh, moon of Jupiter. Is it Europa or is it Io? Fuck, I forgot it was Europa or Io. Shit. Anyway, I like the way it ended. I'm sure someone's going to say it at the end. But, uh, fuck. I forgot which one. But I was really into... I love this film. I was entertained by this film. I think Roy Scheider does a great job. I think this is an underrated sequel. Not many people talk about 2010. Of course, it's weird. I'm saying 2010 movie in the year 2012. Almost 13. But still. Really enjoy the film. Like the film a lot. It's a worthy sequel. I'm not saying much just in case I do more in-depth reviews. Number three is The Relic. Fortunately, this is one of the reviews that got taken down, or I pretty much took down because of copyright footage. But I want to review this again sometime. It says I like reviewing. And definitely number three is The Relic for Peter Hyams films, because... This is the one where it takes place in a museum. It's a creature feature movie where there's a monster running loose in the museum. And you have Tom Sizemore, who's not coked up. He does a really good job. Uh, you have Penelope Ann Miller, which I'm not the biggest fan of Penelope Ann Miller. So, really enough, if you had Mira Sorvino in this film, perfect, because I really like Mira Sorvino and what she did in Mimic. Like, if you had her character in Mimic... Her and her character in this film would have been awesome. I'm just not a big Penelope Ann Miller fan. But she does okay, but I'm not a big fan. But I really like Tom Sizemore in this film. I thought he did a really great job. Love the effects by Stan Winston. I like the idea. Creature feature in a museum. They had a budget behind it. It was well directed. I really like the store behind the film. Uh, the Relic. I really enjoy the film. I really want to review this again sometime. I cannot believe still that Cisco you can't see it. You can't you still can't see it. It's so damn dark. Cisco and Ebra actually gave this film two thumbs up, which I am shocked as shit. But I, I love the relic. Number two, of course, Time Cop. One of the best Van Damme films out there. Very fun movie. Very entertaining film. Granted, there's something about the plot which I would go on for days and days about that doesn't make sense to me about this plot. Something that's like, wait, huh? Like, that I always get confused about, but I mean, I'll say that on the day I review it. Still, very fun, entertaining, great idea. Very professional looking. They had a good budget behind it. Well done action sequences. Ron Silver plays a good bad guy. Just have a lot of fun with Time Cop. Time Cop's a fun movie. And number one, of course, is End of Days, which, again, I had done a review for this film, but it was Universal, and Universal are kind of picky with shit, so I'll do this review again sometime, and I just love End of Days. That's your favorite Peter Hines film? Sue me. This film got shit on when it came out. It became a big bomb. I would not, I would bet money that Arnold's not a big fan of this movie, just, just guessing. But I think it's well directed. It's Gabriel Burns having a ball. Arnold, I think, actually does a good performance. Yeah, you could tell the budget was on screen, has an epic feel to it. Arnold kissed the devil's ass. And that's good.